WBAP. Very good. Dr. G.M. Cox is the director of the Public Administration Master's Degree Program at Tarleton State in Fort Worth. Has 40 years of experience in law enforcement. Dr. Cox, thanks for being on the program this morning. How serious is violence going to get at a Donald Trump rally if they don't get a, ha- a handle on it right now? Good morning, Hal. Uh, glad to be here. I would say that I don't believe the trend of violence is going to go up. I think it's probably going to continue because I believe there's there's a not such an invisible hand involved in in spurring on the protesters to uh, and their tactics. These protesters that are showing up, uh, in your experience, are are they sent there? Are these just people really upset with Donald Trump, uh, or is it staged? I think a little bit of all that. I think you've got individuals who are, uh, number one, committed, motivated to be uh, anti-Trump. They don't like Trump. They don't like Trump's politics. And then you have individuals behind that. We already know that Black Lives Matter and MoveOn.org have have officially sponsored and, in fact, encouraged people to go. And somewhat following the, the game book uh, of Saul Alinsky, who was a civil rights protester back in the day and created in his mind a game book uh, of plays and how they're going to protest. And they're, they're playing the book. Yep. I'm going to ask you what Donald Trump himself can do about this after we break here for traffic. I'll come right back to you in the classic Chevrolet.com right now traffic center. Here is Laura Houston. Still pretty tolerant rush hour. We do have the issue southbound on the tollway at Spring Creek Parkway. You've got an accident there blocking the right lane. That's heavy back to 121. Also seeing those delays, northbound LBJ, Centerville, Ferguson. That accident's still there taking up the HOV lane as you move through Mesquite. Westbound 175 at Bear Street, an accident there in the right lane. That's backing up beyond 2nd Avenue. And Webb Chapel at Northwest Highway, lights are flashing red. Covering Tarrant and Denton counties, here's Monty Cook. I-20 westbound at 360, couple of right lanes taken away by a wreck southbound on I-35E around Frankfurt Road. That stalled vehicle still there in the center lane, still heavy toward 407 Justin Road. WBAP right now, traffic watch. I'm Monty Cook. All right, Brad Barton, the forecast, please. We'll be up to 85 today, but winds turn to the northwest this afternoon. We'll turn cooler night, low 52, and then later in the week, just a hit and miss chance of isolated showers and storms. Right now, WBAP 65 degrees. Brad, Dr. G.M. Cox is with us. He is the director of the Public Administration Master's Degree Program at Tarleton State of Fort Worth. Dr. Cox, back to the uh, political unrest at these Donald Trump rallies. Uh, For those of us that are old enough to remember, the 1968 Democratic National Convention in Chicago, uh, Stan out in my mind and uh, you know unrest uh, violence at political rallies it's not unheard of what's the difference between uh, a Donald Trump rally and, and all the others well it fundamentally I think times have changed that's one uh, we've seen back then you had a different group of operators and, and protesters uh, much more bent on using extreme violence what you see at Trump is more of a, I call it like a, a, a volume Turn up. You see people that are protesting. They've turned up the volume on their behavior, become very visible. Uh, I saw the news uh, of the Chicago uh, coverage the other day, and I noticed that many of the protesters were flipping people off. They were getting in their face, mm-hmm. uh, just basically begging to have a, a confrontation. I don't think that Donald Trump, I don't think it's the rightful place of law enforcement to tell Donald Trump what he can and cannot say. I will say that there's probably meetings going on between in, in saying, look, you can't incite a riot. You can't incite or by utterance of words create such a hostile environment that people are going to react to that. Uh, and that's called the breach of the peace. But what, I mean, I haven't seen any of his conversation, his statements go that far. So it leads, leads me to believe that these people are being coached. They're responding to a specific, uh, they want a specific vision for people to see, and I think that's what's pushing a lot of this. Well, I'll give you three specific examples here. When Donald Trump says, throw them out, or when Donald Trump says, I'll pay his legal fees, or when Donald right. Trump, when Donald Trump, uh, well, I forgot my third one. Take, take, his, take his coat from him, you know, yeah, don't let him have his coat. Uh, well, is, is that considered inciting a riot uh, because, you know, the Democrats are blaming Donald Trump for all this, all these problems when he's when actually all it, it looks like to me if if i'm in front of a bunch of people 
and I'm trying to give a speech, and there's somebody in the back of the room doing that to me, I'm going to holler, throw them out, please. So is is it bad? Is it bad to do that? I think uh, I think a certain amount of engagement is probably expected, particularly since Trump is not screening or vetting people that are coming to his event. So anybody can come. Uh, you have to have a ticket, and you get in. But he's not saying, uh, or his security people aren't saying, "Hey, look, the, are you a protester? Or not? You need to go over here and this fine, whatever." He's letting them in. And I think, quite frankly, uh, a good politician, a, a true politician, wants to engage those people that who may not agree with them. But I think there's a difference about how you go in engaging. Uh, civility is important. Obviously, we're not seeing that. All right. And some things, and some things that Donald says can be very uh, incendiary, but not insightful. I'll give you an example. Uh, the second example you gave where I'll pay your, your – that could come very close. But he didn't say particularly, look at the guy next to you carrying a protest sign. Go ahead and hit him. And when you do, I'll pay your uh, legal fees. That's a very different statement. And that's the third one I, I thought of was, if you hit me, I'm going to come back and hit you twice as hard. You know, so right. uh, those kind of statements. So Donald Trump, does he have control over these uh, rallies then? If he would just, if he would uh, soften it up a little bit and and uh, uh, and tried uh, and try to uh, uh, reach out to all. Well, I think then you would be responding to the protesters' demands and somewhat have, had, would have acquiesced <laughs> to, yeah. to them. Yeah. I, I'm not saying, I, I, again, I want to point out that, that Trump has a right to say what he wants to say within a certain boundary. I mean, uh, we know that freedom of speech, freedom of assembly all have uh, limits. For instance, you have the freedom of assembly unless you're in a riot. You can't do that. Mm-hmm. You, you have freedom of speech unless your your speech is incendiary or calls for a violent overthrow of the country, mm-hmm. that kind of thing. You can't walk into a theater and yell fire yep. So it's because it's irresponsible speech. But at the same time, if the protesters are demanding he sculpt his comments in a certain way and he acquiesces to that, that's that's what they want. Uh, so I think it's unfair to, to blame, the, in this case, the politician for the actions of the protesters. Uh, I think it's probably important that Donald Trump knows that what he says matters uh, and that he, you might be more selective in your terms. Right. I'm sure he's meeting with I'm sure he's meeting with his security people to try to get a handle on this, but right. I don't see the, the violence escalate. All right, Dr. G.M. Cox, Tarleton State, great university. Sure appreciate you being on with us this morning. Thanks for all the insight there. 757 Marley is here with the 8 o'clock news next. A California company planning a big expansion in Texas. The details.